Welcome, sweet friends, to the channel Frugal Money Saver. We are so glad you're here. My name is Emmy. My husband is Paul. How about that precious butterfly at the opening of the video? I wanted to film the Rose of Sharon Bush for the beginning of the video. We have them all over our property, but this one is right here at the bottom of our steps, and it's huge and beautiful. And I was just Focusing on those two flowers, the next thing I know, this butterfly comes and just graces me with their presence. So beautiful. Oh my goodness. I was shocked. It, it was the timing was just perfect. And did you see the pollen all over the little butterfly? It was just covered. So I think that was just a great way to start this video. My husband Paul and I are an early retirement debt and mortgage free couple living in the state of New York. And this channel basically shows you how to have a full abundant life while spending less money. Today is viewers choice or challenge. This is another video that so many of you requested we would be here for a while with names. You're coming in with we need to have more frugal recipes. We need to have recipes that are using less meat, that are using cheaper cuts of meat or no meat at all. And we just need to be able to feed our families without breaking the bank. And we're going to share easy, cheap, from scratch meals with you today. Each one of them is delicious in their own right. We went to Acme the other day to pick up our free Saturday sampler, which was some cheese and free carrots, which was a plus. But we just happened to look around at prices. Wow, wow. Um, yeah, prices are just popping. It doesn't look like they're going to be coming down anytime soon. So we need to get on board. We need to get serious. We need to get down and dirty and start rethinking our food budget. We need to start rethinking convenience foods to stretch our dollar even further. So the first recipe we are going to start with, simple, easy, delicious. It's roasted cherry tomato pasta. This is a perfect money-saving recipe. Tomatoes are on sale everywhere if you don't grow them yourselves. We have ours from our garden. A plethora of them are coming in and we're finding all new ways to cook with them. But right now, tomatoes are very cheap in the supermarket as well. We're going to turn the camera around, get into our kitchen, and share our first easy, cheap, money-saving meal with you. This recipe is a great way to use up any cherry tomatoes you have from your garden. And they're also a reasonable price in the stores. This is just the most delicious recipe. We're going to be making some roasted cherry tomatoes with penne pasta or any kind of pasta. Use what you have. So I weighed this out and I have exactly a pound here. And if you have a little less, that's fine. A little more, that's fine. We're going to need some freshly ground black pepper. The recipe, which I will link below the original, called for a third cup olive oil. That just seemed like way too much. I used two tablespoons. I have a quarter cup of just regular breadcrumbs. You can use panko, whatever you have. I have a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese and two cloves of garlic. And I may add a dash of balsamic vinegar, but I will let you know if I decide to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is take these cherry tomatoes and I'm gonna cut them in half and put them all over the bottom of the casserole dish, cut side facing up. Is take those two cloves of garlic and I am going to put them right into the olive oil. That's one and two. This way when we spread it, it will just disperse a little bit better. So here we have the olive oil and the garlic and we're just gonna put that all over these tomatoes. Scrape that olive oil. It's 
looking perfect already, right? <laughs> then we're going to take that quarter cup of breadcrumbs. This is a different recipe than I have tried. I've roasted tomatoes before, but this sounds exceptional. So we got that quarter cup of breadcrumbs, and now we're gonna put the Parmesan on top, just like that. A little cracked black pepper. You can doctor this up even more. You can put oregano, you can put all that in. But what we're going for is that fresh, delicious taste of these cherry tomatoes. I am gonna be adventurous and put just a little bit of balsamic vinegar. I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of balsamic over this. Don't be scared. Balsamic is a sweet vinegar. You don't have to put the balsamic, not at all. I think it will give the tomatoes just that depth of flavor we're looking for. Preheated our oven to 425 degrees. We're going to take it now and put it in for just about 15 to 20 minutes. While the tomatoes were roasting, I cooked up a half a pound of penne. When it is done cooking, drain it thoroughly. We just pulled this out. It cooked for about 17 minutes and it looks perfect. This is not burnt. That's where I put the balsamic. Now what I'm going to do is take that half a pound of pasta carefully because this pan is very hot. Hold it with the glove. Make sure the pasta is drained completely and cooled slightly. We want all that olive oil and we want those breadcrumbs. We want all this taste together in here. I switched to a spatula because that's a little bit easier. You could have done this in a frying pan, but you would not have achieved that same roasted taste that you get from a high temperature oven. This smells so good. I should have done it in a bigger pan and I will tell you that. Do it in a nine by 13 pan, definitely. Because you're working with a hot pan and this is awkward. Whereas if it was a little bit bigger, it would be easier. Oh my goodness. Okay, we are gonna plate this up, put a little Parmesan cheese on it, delicious. Now we're just gonna put a little extra Parmesan right on top, grate a little of that. And we wish you bon appetito. That was totally Paul approved to giant thumbs up. Please heed my advice though. Make sure your pasta is drained thoroughly and cooled just a little bit. We want the pasta water to be evaporated off the pasta. If you take that not thoroughly drained pasta, put it in that hot pan, it's not a good thing. It splatters and it's sizzling. You don't wanna do that. Also, my other tip, use a nine by 13 pan. Even though it's a half a pound of pasta and just a pound of those little tomatoes, 9 by 13 is the way to go, and I should have done that. But we managed, and it was fine and very, very delicious. That is one way to stretch a half a pound of pasta and a pound of tomatoes, and everyone will come out feeling like they ate a banquet. So fresh and delicious. Add some basil to it, too, if you have some. So good. Now, our next meal, we're going to take a humble half a pound of ground beef, and we're gonna stretch it to make four really nice sized servings. We're gonna add some vegetables, we're gonna add some rice, a really delicious money-saving recipe. Again, super cheap and a family favorite. Here you go. We are going to take a half a pound of ground beef and make a very filling meal for about four people. And this is so simple. It's one pan, which we all love, a super economical meal to stretch a half a pound of ground beef. We have a half a cup of milk, a cup of broth. Literally use whatever kind of broth you want. It's not going to matter if it's beef, vegetable, or chicken. I had chicken in the freezer. That's what I'm using about two cups of cooked rice. 
What's great about this is if you make rice for a meal, you make some extra. It is a great way to stretch a protein, just plain rice. You can use brown rice cooked, whatever you'd like, but just a great way to stretch. Then I have about two cups of frozen mixed vegetables that I just ran quickly under warm water to thaw them. You can use mixed vegetables. You can use peas, peas and carrots, whatever you want to use. Again, this is so customizable. And we have our one tablespoon of butter. I've got a half a pound of ground beef. We've got about a half a cup of grated cheese, customizable. Use whatever kind of cheese you want. Two tablespoons of flour, about a half of a small onion that I diced, and then just a bunch of great seasonings. We've got paprika, we've got garlic, we've got onion powder, red chili pepper, pepper, and salt. First thing we're gonna do is brown the ground beef. So I browned the ground beef first. Then I'm going to take the ground beef out after I drain it and just set it aside for a minute. So I melted our tablespoon of butter and now I'm going to add the onions. And what I forgot to tell you we're gonna add is a clove of garlic as well. But I'm gonna let the onions cook down first before I add the garlic. Our onions cooked beautifully, and now we're just gonna add a little fresh crushed garlic, get those flavors all together. Now I'm gonna take our two tablespoons of flour. We're just gonna toast that flour. So we just wanna make sure that flour is toasted very carefully. We're gonna add our half a cup of milk, our cup of broth. What we're going to do is season this. I've got this on, I lowered this to about a medium low right now. I'm gonna add paprika. I'm eyeballing this, you do it to taste, please. I know we added onion, but I'm gonna add a little onion powder. I know we added garlic, I'm gonna add a little garlic powder. Little extra, never hurts. I'm gonna add a little red chili pepper. You don't have to add that by any means. Just a little pink Himalayan salt and some black pepper. Give this a good mix. You can see how beautiful and thick this is becoming. Do you know what would be awesome in this if my husband ate them? Would be mushrooms. Oh my goodness, would that be good. This smells so delicious right now. And you can see we're definitely getting thicker. So we just let that cook for just about a minute. Now to this, we're going to add our meat, we're going to add our veggies, and we're going to add our cooked rice. And we're just gently going to toss this. The trick that makes this so great, I think for us, is there's no canned soup in it. Most of the time, something like this would call for a can of cream of mushroom or can of cream of chicken. Basically, with the roux we made, we made our own homemade cream of soup, basically. Look how much we have now here between the vegetables and the rice and the meat. So we're just going to keep turning this. We want to heat it right through. Just cover this and put it on low for just a few minutes to heat it through. So this has been heating for a couple of minutes and I just keep stirring it. It's definitely heated through now. This is so economical because literally all you're doing is taking a half a pound of meat and stretching it. Now, we're gonna take our cheese and we're gonna put it over top because this is just gonna give it a little something extra. Turn the heat off. We're gonna cover it again to make sure that cheese melts all the way through. How delicious does this look? You have got your vegetables, you have got your protein, 
You have got your carbs. You've got your dairy. We've got everything. Woo! Look at this cheesy goodness. Look how much it ended up making. What you could do is serve this with a crisp green salad. We wish you bon appetito. I hope this last beef and rice recipe takes you through the fall because that is a one pot, hearty, warming, delicious meal. It's great for now, but once that cool weather comes, ground beef goes on sale, get it, put it away. All you need is a half a pound for that. I mean, you could add more if you wanted, but I'm telling you, it will feed four people. Add a green salad on the side. So, so economical and really good. Now, our last recipe I showed you a while ago. I don't even know how long. And it is one of the ones that you all have made and said to us, oh my goodness, it's so delicious. We have so many new viewers, we thought we would share it again. This is a great way to use up those potato skins. Absolutely Paul's favorite appetizer that I make. How delicious are those potato skins? They were so good. There's no reason to go out and buy frozen pre-made potato skins for what, $7 in a yeah, box? That would be not, ridiculous yeah, if not no, more. You, you do these yourself, they're easy, it's fun, we work together on yeah. it, and uh, amazing. Absolutely amazing. And I think it literally came to less than a dollar for all those potato skins, and you're wasting nothing. Let's get into the kitchen once again. I baked a quiche this morning for breakfast and I hate to heat up the oven and not to put anything else in it but the quiche. So I had a bunch of little potatoes and I am going to show you how to make the best potato skins you have ever had. So what I did is I just baked these like a normal potato and then I put them in the refrigerator to cool. So these are cold now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them in half and take out the insides and we're going to save the insides for mashed potatoes. Let me show you. Okay, so you're just going to cut your potato after it's all baked and cooled and then take out the middle. But leave a little bit in there. You don't want to go all the way down to the skin. Nice coating like that. I'm going to do that with each potato. Here they are, all finished. Look at all the potato I have. It's all cooked, so we can make mashed potatoes, potato pancakes, whatever we want to do with that. But this way, we're not wasting any of that potato. Put the cooked potato back in the fridge. So here we have our potato skins. And in this bowl, I have about a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. And then in the back, you're gonna see I have a little bit of salt, I have a little paprika, I have a little garlic powder. I think I'm gonna pull out some black pepper as well. And what we wanna do right now is just brush the inside of each one of these skins with a little olive oil. That's why we want to leave a little bit of that potato in. These hands down, I guarantee you, will be the best potato skins you've ever tasted. No joke. So I'm just going to cover these with the olive oil. I'm going to take a little bit of the paprika, put it on each one, now I could have mixed these all into the olive oil. This way it just coats it a little more evenly because when you add it to the olive oil, in the beginning those get a lot more than the ones at the end. I do it this way, a little extra work, but it really comes out well. And then just a little tiny sprinkling of salt. And then I'm gonna grind some black pepper. Now I've got my oven preheating to 425 degrees. I'm gonna put them in for seven minutes. While they're cooking for those seven minutes, I'm gonna fry up a little bit of bacon, just about two pieces. 
These cooked for seven minutes at 425. Now what we're gonna do is turn them over. This is what makes them so amazing. Please use tongs, that oil makes them really hot. I put a little bit more olive oil and I'm just gonna give these just a little bit more. We want them to really be crispy and delicious. You can use whatever spices you want. Like I said, keeping it simple and delicious because the toppings add so much flavor as well. There you go. Seven minutes more at 425. These cooked for another seven minutes. Seven minutes on one side, flip them, seven on the other. Now what we're gonna do is just flip them again. Make sure you line your tray with either the silicone mat like I have. Clean up would be a little tough if you don't have something on this tray. Do you see how delicious these look already? And you're not wasting any part of the potato. I have some grated Monterey Jack cheese here. You can see where we're going. Use any kind of cheese you would like. Anything that seems good to you. And you just need a little bit. You're going to be the hit of the next football party you have. The end of this month, I believe, college football starts. We love college football. Go Clemson! All got a little cheese. Oh. Now in this little bowl is some crispy bacon. You're just putting a little on for flavor. It was only two slices of bacon. It was a perfect amount for these potatoes. If I turn the oven off, I'm going to stick them in the hot oven with it being off just to melt the cheese for about 30 seconds. That's it. Now all I'm doing is putting a dollop of sour cream. Think of how much money you save because theoretically when you make mashed potatoes, you peel them. I know some people keep the skin on, but a lot of people don't. So we are taking something and we are making it gourmet quality that other restaurants in the frozen food section charges you an arm and a leg for. We just made it for a couple of cents. Look at how delicious this looks. This is going to be your go-to potato skin recipe. Trust me, the best ones you will ever taste. I'm sure you've gone to a restaurant, ordered an appetizer of potato skins. They can run upwards of about $10. And you wanna know something else about potato skins you get in the restaurant? It's always an odd number. Where is that other half of potato skin? I'm not kidding. If you ever ordered potato skins out, every time back in the day when we used to do this, Paul would say, there's seven potato skins, where's the other half? They always give you an odd number. What do they do, eat it in the back? I don't know, it's just weird. But anyway, make them yourself, make them healthier, save yourself some money. They are such a great football snack. Food. We hope this video really sheds some light on some good economical from scratch meals. Very easy, very simple, and they will really save you quite a bit of money. And that's what we're all trying to do right now, especially as we move into this cold weather. Question of the day, give me your best economical, hands down, go-to recipe in a pinch. Something that you eat when you're trying to stretch your budget, your favorite meal, something that you know will feed several people and cost a minimal amount of money. Please share that with us because it won't only encourage us, it'll encourage our viewers as well. So we hope this video proved helpful. Times are tough, but we're sticking together, we're keeping it real, and we're gonna do what we have to do to get through this. So please, if you would be so kind and you enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Come on, we're so close to 26,000. 
hit that subscribe button. Click that little bell and hold till the word all so that you are alerted every time we make a new video. We ask you to stay well. We ask you to be safe. And above all, we wish you blessings. God bless. Until our next video.